Hello and welcome to another game of Star Letter. It is still season 6. It is day number 26 out of the 27 days. That's right, we only have got two more games left, including this one that is, so tomorrow is our last day. For now we're gonna see 4FC taking on TCM. For 4FC it's not yet their latest match, they still have a match to play later tonight, which will be their last one. And uh, for TCM, this is indeed their last match, and this is a match that for them doesn't really matter that much anymore. They've got five wins, nine losses so far. TCM is not going to go to Kiev, but they're also looking pretty solid to not get dropped down uh, or having to play regulation matches for that matter. Same thing goes for, for FC. They've got seven uh, wins, six losses. I guess in theory, and I really mean this in the biggest theory there is, if Quantic loses to OSG, if KP loses their two remaining matches, then 4FC might still have a chance to go to Kiev, but uh, that's not ent entirely up to them anymore. But they at least need to win this one. We're going to see if they can get the last points here on the table. Of course, today with me is k -pop Toses. He is, of course, our stats man for today and for, the, uh, for most of the season, actually. So, um, yeah, in case you haven't heard of them, that's quite surprising because he's been here for a while and he is the one that you won't hear, won't see. And we also have someone that you will hear. You won't see him either, but you will hear him. He's my co-caster, <laughs> Vikramond. <laughs> you were trying to go for a little reversal there. Yeah, it didn't really work out. <laughs> yeah, I've got a webcam somewhere around here, but you don't you don't want that. Um, so, yeah, you're right, I guess. 4FC, what's their... Did they, so they beat Kaipi in their game? Uh, I think they did, yes. So, I guess if... Well, I don't know what the record against... They beat Quantic. So, yeah, if both of those teams lose and 4FC win, I guess they could be a dark horse to get that fourth slot. Yeah, they they like there's there's a chance. So for Rock's Kiss, uh, they they are right now higher than 4FC on the la rankings, but they still have only one game to play. But right. in theory, for them also, they could get to nine wins still and six losses. And that's, that's going to be yeah. There there is like this this like you have the top two guaranteed, right? Alliance versus Pro. They're yeah, they're course. through. They're like. Big there. Now V would have been also one of those two those yes. teams, but they are not not going to be there. They're going to be in China. Yeah, it's all because of Navi. Honestly, yeah. that's what's that's what's making it such an interesting end of season. Yeah. Because if they if, if Quantic, Maus, and Kaipi were just playing for one slot, that would be one thing. But instead, they're playing for two slots, which opens the door for these teams like Roxas and 4FC to actually sneak their way into Kiev, Dang, which I would be I would be very happy with that. That'd be so cool. That would, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, the down downside is, though, like, for example, 4FC, should they be placed, like, 4th or 5th here when, and go to Kiev, they don't actually have a sponsor. Right. They would have to find a way to... Well, it's... They live in Sweden. It's not that far. And, I mean, to be fair, like, uh, Ubos like that goes Kaipi to DreamHack... Wins. Yeah. Uh, Ubos goes to DreamHack, right? The only reason they right. can go is because of community money. Yeah. So, and community uh, yeah. effort. I'd pitch in for four friends plus Trilly to go to Starlight or why I am, not? I am poor like crazy, but I would pitch in. I would help. If they can get there, I would support that. They have been a Star Series almost since the beginning. Have yeah. never been dropped out. Have always been like around the middle area and have lately been starting to do really well. Or at least a lot better than they used to. Remaining. And yes, I would help to get him to help them get Five there. Seconds remaining. I'm going to reconnect on Skype. You're breaking up for me. Be right back. Oh, that's me. That's me. Oh, that's you? Okay. Yeah, I dropped some frames, so I'm guessing that was me. If Unless you can still hear, not hear me now. I'm fine now. Yeah, that was me then. Sorry, people, you had some frames dropped, so you have also some lag, but it evened out again. So we have the purple so, combo for T TCM, by the way. I told you. They do. You you tell me, and you're always right about it, the purple combo. It's, Which is funny, because these heroes, they work well together, but not, like, enormously yeah, well. Yeah, they don't Basically, really have any big synergy going. The the main synergy is that they both uh, kind of crap on carries. Like, they're anti-carry heroes. Um, so if you want to force... Like, if you're worried that the other team has one strong carry player, or they're going to have one extremely strong carry hero, Bane Darkseer is an immediate response to that, because you get the Enfeeble, the Fiend's Grip, and the Wall. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe that anti carry. Maybe they're expecting something from 4FC that they want to counter that what? way already. I mean, we have got Lone a. Druid, probably. Druid's still in the pool, actually. 4FC, yeah. they don't pick it up straight away. That's interesting, because normally they do. They normally do, yeah. yeah but maybe they, they think uh, TCM doesn't really play Lone Druid much at all, so maybe 4FC felt that they could take it for a bargain later on in the draft, which so far they look to be correct. This is TCM's last chance to take it before 4FC just slams the, slams the Lone Druid key. 
Well, let's see if TCM does it first. Uh, and so, Kaipi, I guess 4FC Kaipi is the last game of today, yes. right? Seconds, okay, so that's a really, really important game. If yeah. 4FC take this game against TCM and then take the game against Kaipi, uh, then they have to wait on Quantic, basically. But still, that puts them in much better position. Well, Quantic will play their last game at the same time as we are casting Frenetic vs. Empire. Ooh. So, we will know that by the time that 4FC that's is facing true. 4FC. That's true. So, 4FC will know what sort of position yeah. they're it's it's yeah it's delicate it's delicate <laughs> that's a that's the best word for it that's the best word for it. it it can go either way for tcm not just yet uh, i mean they are of course already already basically out but uh, they'll see if they can pick a pick a fight here with 4fc and they are still thinking about what they're picking up i mean in terms of bands we didn't have that much surprising apart from the shadow demon being the first band and then the wist the bat right and the gyro pretty logical with the weaver actually and the train protector there Queen of Pain and Clockwork ban out as well. I'm kind of quite curious to see how 4FC will use the Skywrath Mage. I'm actually thinking support. Ten seconds remain. Keeper of the light. Yeah, it's it's most likely. Ooh, ooh, Enigma, interesting. Very. That interesting. just changed. Yeah. We have seen Fnatic using uh, Enigma fairly yeah, often lately, but they are the only team. Enigma honestly is very strong. So the. What you have to think about with Enigma is that he is the world's fastest jungler. Like, if you put him in the jungle against a team that maybe is jungling somebody else, you can really, really outlevel them just in terms of the Enigma will get very strong very quickly. He's a great ganker. This new, we haven't really discussed the new Malefice much, but it's excellent. I mean, it gives you, it's much better to have it the way it now is with this split up stuns than it was before, even if the stun was longer at certain levels before. Having the three separate stuns, even of a quarter second, is almost a pseudo disable for that entire time period yeah. so he becomes a much stronger ganker coming out of the jungle oh interesting they go for warlock this wow this is really going pear shaped <laughs> and, and so. as you said that i said interesting they go for spirit breaker <laughs> yeah okay okay so spirit breaker support is still an option if they run skywrath in the mid oh my god but you know what they're also doing they're picking it up straight away TCM has got no bonus time left. They're force. They're forcing these the bats to be yeah. really fast. That's a good point. Like, I don't know. The draw. Row? Yeah, that's not. That's not what Forcey would have gone for. I think. Well, you can't random ban. There's no such thing as a random. Band. You cannot. If it if you run out of time, you actually ban nothing. Yeah. So they just banned something, because they could... I mean, to be fair, and what do you expect still right for 4 of C? If they picked up a Spirit Breaker... We've seen support Spirit Breaker a while uh, back this week, I believe. So that would mean right. a Skywrath Mage mid, Spirit Breaker support with Nyx Assassin, maybe. But I, that means yeah. you have two melee supports. I think Life Stealer actually it would be a great way to finish this team out. Who's still Ten available, seconds. BT Dubs. the team fight, though, from TCM. I mean, even disregarding Five the vacuum, you've got yourself the chaotic offering with an illuminate, with the fatal bonds being there as well, and then the thing you still is... have oh god. Poof, PL. Wow, so go audio, going hard in the paint on this hard carry. Lich okay, so it's actually carry spirit breaker. Um this is a choice. I actually favor him a little bit more. Solo mid spirit breaker! I Solo mid spirit breaker, you I heard don't here first. even Solo mid spirit breaker. I... That's I'm out. <laughs> no, this, this game's gonna be great. I'm really pumped. I feel like this is still side lane Spirit Breaker in mid, because they've run Strangby mid as Kunkka before, but I, I don't see how side lane Farmer Skywrath is a good idea. I mean, the Silence is great. I honestly think the Warlock is gonna turn out to be not, not that great of a pick, because um, if he gets Ancient Sealed at the beginning of a fight, we know, we've seen Warlock be extremely vulnerable to Silences, and also, Spirit Breaker is going to take just... Uh, he's going to do a pounding clinic on Warlock. He's going to be punching that Warlock in his face in every single context. Warlock, he's not something like a Sven or a Rubik. If Spirit Breaker is charging at Warlock, there's nothing he can do except ult him to stop the charge. And once the Spirit Breaker is on top of the Warlock, that's a dead Warlock, more often than not. So, I... Please TCM are going to have to be very careful with Verna. I, I think he could just end up involuntarily feeding. Not because he's a bad player, he's a great player. Please but it's just a really dangerous situation. And you were right, it's mid... Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh, I don't think I've seen it before. Have we seen it before? Have we I have. Not... Uh, Navi oh. played it extremely poorly against Power Rangers in Season 5. Damn, Navi. Really? <laughs> Ruining lost... my moment. 
But I thought yeah. I had it first. No. Well, you casted that game too, I think. We casted every single star. That right, exactly. <laughs> well, we're gonna see a spirit breaker. It's not gonna be an easy lane for him, though. Uh, but who is he going to be up against is the question. Wordy, he's going to be up against a Warlock. Now, that's not going to be an easy lane for sure. I mean, he has got very high base damage for and a very it's easy attack so animation so as well. And long range, so I'm right. not too convinced by that. But we'll see how it goes. We have someone writing, hello, it is the Skyrath Mage. Hello, Strangby. Hello to you too. So Strangby, the carry player of 4FC, playing the Skyrath Mage for 4FC. He'll be on the safe lane top. We'll have Boomski on the support next assassin. Rotating top as well to support. We have Blomberg in the mid lane on his Spirit Breaker cow. We have got Curly playing the Enigma. It looks to be like he will be going into the jungle, but they will just get two denies here. This is like the ultimate deny lane up, as Iconoclast will also deny, deny one. And yes. will they actually That's do this insane. together? That, oh wow. <laughs> that is a really annoying lane. Unfortunately, I think. TCM, yeah, they're sending it top. So for TCM, Hawaii O on the Keeper of the Light and Atsa on the Bane supporting the Phantom Lancer Go Audio. And so they're going to dodge this XP steal lane completely. And then that leaves uh, Blueberry Ninja to go up into this lane against, uh, looks like Krilly on the Enigma. And so that's on the Dark Sea, of course. And Verna as the solo mid warlock going up against the Bullman himself, Blomberg. I'm really interested by the fact so. 4FC taking the exact opposite approach to Maus. Maus were like, oh, our playoff lives are on the line in these games. We should probably go the safest possible lineup that we know works. 4FC are like, oh, our playoff lives are all the line. <laughs> it's time to break out the bull man. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Lich, of course, who's also a hero, not really in the metagame right now. No, we've seen it a couple of times on the offlane. And uh, right now we actually have Lich rotating into the jungle, so he'll stack there. As you can, of course, vote. Who's your favorite here in this matchup of the Spirit Breaker Warlock? Solo mid matchup. Well, and of course the entire game. Capitals make a difference. So, case sensitive. TCM, capital letters, 4FC with FC, capital letters. Exclamation mark, vote who you think will win. In the meantime, this mid lane not going the way of Blumberg. There's no surprise though. 3 for 1 for him as Werner's sitting on 6 for 2. And that harassment is really annoying for him. He does have a bit of... A bit of, uh... Regen still left though. And he has that shield which helps him out a bit. I'm kind of waiting for him to start charging up on something. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's gonna sit here until he's level 6, do you? <sighs> the thing is, level 1 charge is actually pretty slow. The speed is nothing special. Plus, if you're charging from mid, you're... Warlock will know immediately yeah. that you're charging somebody. Yeah. Okay. So, it's... The thing is, maybe they can get kills on this Phantom Lancer, which is what they'll need. So, if they start with the Arcane Seal, Phantom Lancer can't Doppelwalk in response. Not that he actually has Doppelwalk leveled yet. Okay, he does take it for level 2. But something is going to have to happen, because this trialing just on its basis is not strong enough to stand up to Bane Keeper of the Light PL. So, oh, okay, maybe they get the got first I've got a bit of uh, trouble here, though, but the Illuminate will force them back. Levels is a big problem, like 1-1-1 one, one, one across this entire trialing, whereas Phantom Lancer's already most of the way through two. This and is trouble. Up on Boomski, here comes the Silence still, and a Bash, here Here's comes Blomberg with the charge, they will be able to get the first blood! Strangby with the kill, the haste rune up on Blubberk helping out, he charged from a haste rune, now that's gotta be fast, there's a slow, double block is still there, do they have some division? They don't, no So, protection. yeah, no vision, but that was a good kill, haste rune of course is by far the best rune for Spirit Breaker, uh, especially this early, it not only gives him the speed that he needs to keep chasing people, it also, because he actually has his greater bash skilled already, gives him uh, a, bo a percentage bonus to damage from his move speed, and it's the maximum move speed. Yeah, I've got him back in the middle lane already. Wern is not really that fussed about him leaving. He's still doing really nice on the last hits. He's actually doing nicest of everybody on the map right now. Only Enigma is keeping up a bit. Enigma sitting on 12 for 10 last hit. Blueberry Ninja though, I mean, this is a bit of a counterproductive lane for 4FC. I mean, they have got this hero that can deny tons, which is great. But then on the other side, you have not got someone that can really, like, he doesn't really care that much, and he can push real hard with those Iron Shells, so it's gonna be hurting your tower quite a bit. Oh, it's okay. Uh, that's that true, the Ion Shells, but what you can do is actually respond to the Ion Shell with the Demonic Conversion. Yeah. Now, Ion Shell has a lower cooldown substantially, but I think it's actually a fine lane for Krilly. If you look at the stats, I mean, he has 11 denies to the zero that Blueberry Ninja has been able to put up. He's level 5, Blueberry Ninja halfway through 4, so they are earning a bit of an advantage here that they're certainly not getting in the mid, where Blomberg, I mean, just the Fatal Bonds are harassing him so much. Yeah, and of course that level 3 Shadow Word now as well, he actually picked up a level in stats. 
as well to just give him a bit of extra survivability. We do have a pause coming up from the Warlock here mid. Warlock, who is gonna, of course, at level 6, will have a big advantage over 4FC because their major team fight is that chaotic offering. And there is also, of course, a black hole, but black hole is a bit more tougher to land. While chaotic offering is, as you know, it covers the entire lane, you just drop it, and if even if you miss, you still have your golem up. So it even then is still useful. Of course, both of these ultimates have got a very long cooldown. With Black Hole the longest, but also Chaotic Offering is, has also got a very long cooldown for uh, 165 seconds. Even yeah. though last, if, yeah, if, if at the last level, Black Hole will still have a longer cooldown, but not by that much. <laughs> Nightmare, Boomski gonna get charged up. No, it is actually Sorry, Hatsi gonna get charged up. Here comes Boomski with the unveil, and that will be another kill going the way of TCM. Should be going down. One more hit. There we go. The heal is not going to be hitting anymore, and that was the last mana that Werner had. He can't do anything anymore. He's just trying to run away from the fast bull that's chasing him down. And that's yeah, going to be that's... another kill going the way of 4FC. Yeah, Bullman participating in both kills so far. That was a really nice uh, out positioning, really, by 4FC there. Atsa just getting a little bit caught out. Bane, of course, a reasonably fast hero, but he's not going to escape from something like that. So, nice to get the two kills on the board. I still don't feel that overall they're that favored just yet. I mean, for one thing, the, the safe lane carry Skywrath isn't really getting the farm or the levels that he needs. While Audio, his farm isn't fantastic, but he also hasn't died. Like, there hasn't been that much pressure put on him. Oh. One kind of cool thing, look at how many boots everybody's getting. Like, almost everybody took boots as their first item if they could afford it. That's, that's yeah. Spirit Breaker having an impact right there. Everybody on the side of 4 of C4 already having boots, just one that doesn't. Yeah. And it's... Be, uh... Keep in mind, Spirit Breaker gives a percentage of move speed as an aura. Oh, so the higher your base for is... the Spirit Breaker. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Spirit Breaker problem. wins. <laughs> Damn right. But yeah, the look at, he actually has three in Empowering Haste already. Yeah. So he's maxing that extra move speed, and that's why you see everybody with boots. Because they're all going to get 20% more. There's going to be insane movement speed from everybody for FC, which is... By the way, I just said, like, Nickman's Black Hole is hard to land. But if you can get in there fast, you don't really need... I mean, you of course want still a Blink Dagger, obviously, but moving in real fast will still make sure that you are able to catch up your opponents yeah, before absolutely. they have a chance to run. So that is very useful. By the way, I just got... Or just read in the chat that apparently uh, Loda earlier this week in ESL was actually running Spirit Breaker solo mid, so it's a sweet thing to do. <laughs> it's highly Swedish. Was that in their games against the Serbians? That's weird. Verna's gonna get caught. He has no man. There's no way he lifts to us. Like the charge is gonna finish it off. Yeah, you're a Mars man for me, actually. Uh, by the no way, no mana. That's gonna be uh, no mana for the Nether Strike, and that's gonna be him out. Uh, I I barely hear you. By the way, can you reconnect to the Skype call? Yeah, no problem. There was no frames dropped, so that wasn't me, just saying. But he's back soon, and then he's gonna be sounding better than before. Is it? Is it better? No. It is not better. <laughs> That's interesting. We have got- hey, wait a second, Krilly! Gonna be in some trouble here. Malf is already thrown out, the brain step will help keep Atsa up, and Krilly will end up going down there with the iron shell there, but in the meantime, the charge was there. Lumber gets himself another haste rune, gets himself another kill, Blueberry Ninja. He, oh, those Eidolons! Those Eidolons! And Blueberry Ninja, you're so dead! That's a double kill for Blumberg. Well, no, actually, Enigma got the kill for Atsy still, but yeah. I can't hear you. I'm gonna recall the call. That's probably best. Just in case. Recall the call. Hello? No, he's not answering yet. Oh well. In the meantime, we see, I mean, Gaudio has rotated from top to bottom, realized that he couldn't do that much top. And he's got some free brain here, bottom. He is uh, 22 to 5 right now. As we see that, uh, that well, I mean, it's not that great. I mean, he's gonna have done a lot better. But it's not bad. And he hasn't died yet. He is still he is still a level six, and with levels, of course, comes more farm. Of course, because he creates more of himself, he can farm easily in that jungle. And we're just waiting until Vikerman has restarted his Skype because apparently his Skype is uh, messing with him a bit. Blue Bear Ninja is in trouble. Gets an impale. Gets a silence and a slow and cannot get himself away fast enough. Or can he? Or can he? He hasn't got a surge. He tries to surge, but one more hit. There we go. Strangby gets another kill. Strangby who's sitting on 21 for three last hits. But Hi. Still, Hi. You are dead. Can we? Can I just really quick? Oh no, Vern is gonna get picked off again. He does have ultimate black hole. Black hole. I think he's dead. They he have is to so dead. Nightmare. Nightmare. 
Nether Strike. They might be able to do something, but the Nether Strike and it comes out from Lumberg and the bash up an Atsy straight away, and that's gonna be an impale that hits him as well. That's gonna be another kill. Going the way of 4FC, who is now 7 to 1. Mm, not a good situation for TCM. I gotta say that uh, the body block used by all of the oh. Eidolons. I, I saw was, your ping. I was freaking out. I, I saw your ping. I think, okay, he's freaking out. That was what I was I was, I was melting down completely because Bowman and Enigma just working together so well. And like we were talking about, Shiver, this Warlock, he's going to have more and more trouble actually like living and sustaining. He only has the one death, but that could easily have been two if Blomberg had had the mana for Nether Strike. So yeah. it's scary. And it's scary that Phantom Lancer is, is definitely feeling the pressure because like seven to one already, that doesn't give you a position to sort of take a lot of time on PL. And 4FC can push, too. Just don't deny the creeps with Lich and just push with the Adelons. <laughs> that was exactly two minutes ago, by the way, because the Jet's now also going mental about the block. Yeah, well, <laughs> <Nice>. of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 77% win rate where he's not played as a... I think support. he means when he is played as a character. Yeah, cause he's, yeah, yeah, because now he's not playing anything in those stats. <laughs> Yes. No, it, yeah. That's, but yeah, no, I mean, it's a strong option if you can guarantee a safe lane yeah. for him. And early on, we weren't sure if that would happen, but the intercession of the Bullman just charging in once or twice made it so that this tri lane just became harder and harder for TCM. Eventually, they basically abandoned it. And what did Audio actually build? Did he go... He didn't okay, go Soul Ring. Hmm. Oh, Korea. Yeah. Well, that's... So... I He's got... what I think about that. Yeah, Soul Ring and a Bacillus. And why does he have two Ring of Regens? Well, that's for the Tranquils. So he's going to do the trick where you can... Dis uh, he, it's Tranquils. Okay. Well, I'd say I'm not convinced. But he de does need a lot of survivability here. I mean, he is a bit behind. But he's one of those heroes that, with levels, he can still get himself back up to speed in no time. If he just makes sure that he doesn't have to go back to get, ex to get more health. If he just can sustain himself, can get away if need be, and otherwise just farms and is being left alone. And that's of course where the rest of the team comes in, because Warlock, you already mentioned, he has got his rock. He has got that chaotic offering up. He needs to find a good fight and actually have his team of course there as well, because the combination that they can throw out is still very potent. With and the Fatal Bonds, and the rock, and the, the Illuminate going through as well as a vacuum perhaps with Iron Shell there. It is, it's definitely potential for TCM, they just have to find the right opportunity and oh, yeah. see that I don't think they're gonna let themselves get cut out before the black hole is up again. Right. Radiance <laughs> Audio having a little bit of trouble getting all the items on himself to make the... Dota 2 gets really weird sometimes about combining your items, but there we go. The Tranquils and the Soul Ring, this is a good combo, but I wonder if this is the right time for it. Like, it's a very, very good combo for amazing harass early on in the lane, but we're 10 minutes into the game. I'm not going to say laning is over, but I don't know. It does free up the Keeper of the Light to roam more, so that's good. Yeah, um, but yeah, for FC, they realize what needs to be done. They need to be bottom. For one, they're denying two creeps Radiant's per wave, so they can anyway, <laughs> with an Enigma and Lich there. So that's going to be, uh, well, maybe not exactly per wave. Oh, Invisibility Room by Blomberg. He's, he's, he knows that that's a fake one, I hope. Sentry Ward goes down, they saw him picking it up, they see him there. Oh my god! Ah! Run, Ohio! Run! <laughs> I mean, they know. So they yeah. know, yeah, they saw him. Spearbreaker, actually, to be fair, uh, the thing is, because he's got attack. essentially no laning presence against a ranged hero, he's 3 0 and 3 and has next to nothing. Like, it's just power treads. Yeah. And, I mean, he His is. GPM that is control? lower than. Yeah, it's lower than a lot of people. It's higher than the PL, interestingly enough, because of all those kills. Yeah, PL. I mean, PL. My PL's not doing that well. We still have, of He's course, really the highest. Not, and that's the, highest that's the, the thing with Soul Ring. Yeah. Like PL buying a Soul Ring, that's almost a thousand gold. That doesn't generate any more farm for you or anything like that. Like it's not like a diffusal. It's not like a Yasha, or, or even drums. Even drums is great because it gives you extra move and attack speed, which speeds up your farm. Soul Ring does not. I mean, okay, one extra Spirit Lance every fifteen seconds. Yeah, by the way, all supports in this game, everybody levels real slow because of that aggressive tri lane. We still have Boomski at level 6, we have got the Lich not at level 6 yet. We've got the Bane still sitting at level 4 for Atsy for TCM, as well as the Keeper of Light also level 4, so TCM hurt a bit more in that regards than 4 of C. But that's really painful, actually. They need that Fiend script to be doing something. I mean, they. I just said that they should be finding something with their Chaotic Offering. 
But they can't for find more than just maybe a one-person pickoff because yeah. of those support. They can't really come in there to help just yet, and they'll be overthrown by what 4FC can bring. Exactly. 4FC, I mean, even just the Spirit Breaker aura is so scary if you're TCM because they can chase you anywhere. The nice thing is they still have all six towers. So, in fact, they're up, up a tower on 4FC, and that means that the chasing potential is a little bit limited by the fact that once you're fighting under tower, it becomes, you know, much more dangerous. So... I think TCM happy to slow the game down, especially because this PL is starting from a position quite behind. They just want to farm him up, and frankly, they want to get level 11 on Verna and maybe start his Agonims. So he, right now, only has level 1 ultimate. The higher you get the ultimates for Warlock, I mean, the next levels of it give the Golem a lot more potential. So you want that. I'm also... Ooh, I totally missed a kill. I'm oh sorry. yeah, I saw the end of that one. I mean, that was the first Vendetta being used, and he was just stunned in position and then silenced. He couldn't do anything. Couldn't run, couldn't hide. Yep. So one kind of cool thing that they've done with the Warlock, they actually, rather than level Fatal Bonds 3, he's actually taken Upheaval 1. It's rare that you see anybody skilling Upheaval this early, but this might be the one game where it's smart, because you have to counter the the Spirit Breaker, the Bullman movement aura somehow. Yeah. I, the downside is here, like you have to stand there and cast it. One Nether Strike and you're stopping that. One Bash, you're stopping that. One Lich Ultimate, you're done for as well. Impale from long range, Malefice from long range, Silence from long range. You know, you're not going to yeah. be able to stand there very long if you're, if you're out not. in the open. Yeah. That's true. The, the issue is still going to be, like, this Warlock is going to just... I mean, yeah, you're right. The channeling upheaval, you'll get interrupted. The Chaotic Offering, hopefully you'll, you'll get it off. If you don't, I don't see how they win the fight. Krilly actually, looking around, smoked, but it looks like it's going to expire. Yeah. They, they're going to try to fight, maybe, at Tier 1. They have yeah. the fortification. They'll probably pop it uh, in a few seconds. Yeah, there's three here for 4FC to reply, and TCM is backing off, though. Realizing what was coming. They, they I mean, they, they want to have that rock drop, but they don't want to take a 5-on-5 five five team fight. They yeah, want to have, it's... like, a 5-on-3, if possible. Precisely, yeah. That's a great point. Because they're facing a level deficit, and especially, um... This is the most delicate level difference you can have. Both supports of TCM, 5. Both supports of 4FC, 6. The difference between a level 6 support and a level 5 support is... I mean, it's obvious. It's the ultimates. And 4FC has good ults. So do TCM, but they don't have them. In the meantime, we have got another Vendetta. Oh, Boomski is looking for someone. He finds only illusions, though. Oh, they don't think this is the real one. They don't. They don't. No. And, but the, the Vendetta is going to run out. This might be a tower going down. Tower is still very high though, and it doesn't look like they actually want to focus if the Eidolon's actually going together with the Nickman inside a jungle. Blomberg with a double damage rune. They completely dominate the Radiant jungle at this moment, but nobody is left there. Everybody ran. Maybe mid lane they can do something. But 4FC, they've been kind of like, they were they were roaming and killing and getting kills over the map, but, for, but TCM is, is really doing a good job at making sure that it's not going to be easy to find those pickoffs again, their movement has been kind of spot on. They are not roaming out alone. We have Wern and Asi constantly sitting around Goadio. We have on the top lane, Blue Bear Ninja and Hawaii sitting there as well as Oh Haste through and Strang B. They're actually going to go middle right now. This is going to be four heroes middle for TCM. One went, actually Dyer's went home. Top tower is under attack. This is just cat and mouse right now. Yes, definitely. I mean, it's... TCM, nobody wants to fight right now completely. 4FC don't feel quite like they're ahead enough, which I think is probably correct in a five-man engagement. And uh, TCM definitely feel behind, which they are. I mean, not actually by that much gold, but it's just that critical tier for the Phantom Lancer is just trying to farm up the Diffusal Blade. He's starting to get there. Although, I, I really do wish he had just skipped the Soul Ring and gone for straight Yasha or something. Because all he's been doing is farming the jungle, and Yasha is an amazing jungle farm improvement machine. Or just the drums. Yeah, he needs he needs uh well probably defuse right now because he needs to have something to fight early because four of C is not gonna wait around forever, and at some point they are gonna be forced to take those team fights so yeah. better try to get as much as possible out of that. Yep, I I think they know that TCM are farming this jungle and they just haven't been able to actually spot anybody. So it's like well all the creeps are missing so somebody's been stealing cookies from the cookie jar. Of course now you see them also the magic push has been warded. Oh so they find oh, someone Hawaii. out of position finally. But oh lag. I'm lagging. Me too. Well this is Dota lag uh, people. All right. I mean Hawaii probably dies. I don't know if <laughs> you, you think oh, he'll dead. die? You think he die? 
He's dead? Everybody died. Everybody's out except for... We actually didn't get disconnected with everybody else, so... I'm not... Yeah, I'm gonna disconnect in 11 seconds. Yeah, giant Dota TV left that's side. That's how... I mean, that's how hype Bullman is. He actually charged... Instead of charging the Keeper of the Light, he charged the server. And he stunned it. So yeah. that he propped a greater bash onto the server. Reconnecting right now. Dota TV also frozen, so that was two minutes ago. But entire Dota network down for a bit there, I guess. Server network that is. Of course... Grim. Yeah, sometimes the servers continue, like, having the games that they're on. Like, you disconnect, but people that are playing can still play. Sometimes it's the servers that go disconnect. And in the meantime, Blumberg is all the way top. What's he doing there? Everybody... Oh, Keeper of the Light still died. No trees. Yes, Keeper of the Light did die simply because uh, the proc of the Greater Bash and auto-attacks killed him. So, I, honestly, there's no way he would have lived, so I don't know if we'll probably play on, in I my think. <laughs> In my screen, he is still standing here. His no, spirit he's lives definitely on. dead. <laughs> His spirit lives on. It does. He's is he's a fundamental, right? So, he of course, his spirit and lives on. And he is standing but... as if he just came back inside the game. So, he is like, his horse is standing all promptly. He's like standing like you would be making a statue of him. Oh, so he oh was... Oh, my uh... God, they made a statue of him after he died. No. <laughs> well, he was he was Ezalor the Grey. You know what I think and now actually. He's the White. You know how you sometimes, if you reconnect, or if if sorry, if someone gets back alive again, if you revive, you actually have for a second there that the enemy that your your hero shows up at where he died. Yeah. That's this because That's he is one be... second away from respawning, and he'll be in the base real soon. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, Those man. timings. Just... Devastating teams, devastating servers. Can can this hero be stopped? I don't know. You know he's the most winning pub hero now since the past. I think he's tied with Warlock or something. Hello. Warlock. Because he was already he was already fourth, and then he got big big buffs in this patch. Big buffs for the big boo. Yeah, I, he's Bullman is for real. I like the idea of the the Team Liquid support Spirit Breaker idea a little more. I I just think this solo mid is so. I don't know, like, it's potentially vulnerable, in it, but you know, it does get you levels. Like, he's level 11 right now. He's the highest level in the game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite sick. I mean, level 10 for the Warlock, it means that he's almost have that level 11 for that level 2 rough, which he needs, actually, which he wants to throw out because he came back to defend. Keep the flight still the nice tower, by the way. We're the can't rock Mr. Rock, though, and he is getting charged, charged right yeah. now. Here comes Blumberg, and I got a cloud yes, there. So. It's already all oh, no. adults. Is there, but is it enough? Doesn't look like it, Werner will end up going down, can't even cast his... Oh, can't even cast his, his Fatal Bonds anymore, and that that Golem can't do anything now either. Yeah, I mean, it's like we mentioned earlier, actually yes, they, they do get the Darkseer pick off, I was gonna mention that. So, Boobski and Strangby coming in from behind, and they're just positioning so well in these jungle engagements. Uh, I mean, it's easy with the ward. Oh, they fight Hawaii still, still as well, Hawaii dies. Maybe wow. Boobski dies though. Or, nice bo or Boobski, as I thought you said, but oh well. That's gonna be my next nickname for him if Boomski ever plays Lina. But that's not possible because <laughs> Matron plays Lina for four. Yeah, Damn. that's a Matron hero. That's too bad. It would it had so much potential. It did. So that's the thing, the warlock, his only response to getting charged in the face is to the rock. Just, yeah, is to put down the rock and hope for the best. And in that case with no backup, there's only so much hope to go around. Oh, um can you tell people in Dota TV that they have to switch broadcasters because we dropped? Sure, uh, if you're in Dota TV, just swap the broadcasters to a different language and then back to hear Shiver, because she disconnected. Yeah, um... I'll also type it. There! <laughs> Said what they should do. Meantime, that was of course a tier 2 tower not dying just yet, so they, they were forced out in the end to take it very low, they just didn't want to risk getting a denied. Blue Meantime, Blue Baron Ninja gets the Nether Strike and a Mystic Flare, and he dies. Strangby, I mean, we haven't really talked that much about Strangby. He's, of course, he's played the Skyrath Mage as, as a carry Strange hero. Ages. He hasn't died yet in the... Yeah, uh, it goes for Aethos. He's got 2300 gold, and he is just pretty rich, actually, because he is the richest ma man on the map. Yes. I love the Satos pick. It's a good item on Skyrath in general because it, you can just continue bombing people while you slow them. It's got great range, so you can use it from uh, 16, 1400 yes. units away. I think 1400 or 1600 units away. And it combos incredibly well with Spirit Breaker. How does anybody run away from your team 
when you have Spirit Breaker and Atos and all that other stuff. Audio, he actually catches up Curly with the oh, nice stuff. Oh, but that impale Black coming hole. off. The Black Hole comes up on two as well, and there should be enough damage to take it down. Gordio is getting charged as well, so even if he doth walks, which he can't, he'll die. Oh, Mechanism helps keep him up a little while longer. Charge is still on his way. Enigma ends up going down, but as does the Bane, Impale hits up Bogo Audio as well, and this should be a kill. Go on the way of Blumberg. There we go. That's one. Can he get another one? Lich Open getting thrown out there. Blue Bear Ninja trying to dodge it out or trying to dismantle it. Gets it as well, but ends up going down just like Werner. That is only one hero left alive, which is the Keeper of Light who is sitting mid. Stemming Illuminates. Yep. And uh, 10 seconds until Chaotic Offering in that fight. If TCM has Chaotic Offering, maybe they can make something happen. But that's again the Bullman, the, the buffs, the guaranteed proc of Greater Bash on the Charge of Darkness is what did it there. Is what killed uh, Audio. And he didn't have that guaranteed prop before 6.78. It added a, a guaranteed BKB piercing stun, uh, greater bash to the charge. Attack. Yeah, it's seven. Like, okay, it was just was it was 17 to zero, right? Because they didn't have a kill yet until this point where they killed Enigma. But it's still it's no, 17 to three. One. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, like, um, because I crashed. I oh. said I, I only saw zero 17. Right, right. But to be so fair, the, zero 17 three is not that much better. <laughs> you weren't far from the truth. Yeah. Uh, audio, I think after one more creep wave, will have his diffusal. That helps a little bit, but I'm still just incredibly concerned. How do TCM actually drag themselves back into this game? They are getting to the Aghanims. That could be part of the solution. So, uh, about halfway to Aghanims on Warlock. But because they don't have control of their own jungle, they don't have that much safe farming space. For and they the, have to give the, the farm to the Phantom Lancer. Yes, I agree. I mean, I guess if TCM holds long enough, <sighs> like a very yeah, long game. Yeah, it's middle tower. Enigma going Necro, so yeah, they want to close it out. They're gonna get the Necronomicon on Enigma. He actually just finished the first one. It's gonna be scary. The push is starting to get pretty intimidating. It, cool, actually. Oh, two Necros. So Lich also going Necro, and he went Phase just for the extra move speed. That's a, look how move speed heavy this team is with phase boots on Lich. How often do you see that and not tranquils or something? Actually, it's one of his recommended items. Is it? It is. <laughs> well, I'm sure because... Matrim is using the Dota team. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> I mean, it's a great combo with Spearbreaker, though. They have yeah. so many slows. Atos, uh, the Lich, whatever oh, it's called. Oh, Hawaii, you're dead, I think. Dude. He is. They're not even going to waste an, a thing on him, a, a charge. Blink, Lightning light, Blink, actually. Skyrim. No, they're gonna let him slide. Oh, but maybe that's a nice nightmare Sick. dodge. There comes a rock and the vacuum back in. Blumberg, he's running for his life right now. He can almost die. Where are the fatal bones that Colin Glass gets put in the fiends? But we'll end up going down. TCM looking for more. Lance up on Boomski. He gets an impale. Just hits creeps and illusions, though. And there comes Blumberg back. He charged up on a while, but he takes in a lot of damage from Werner's Shadow Word. And he will end up going down if he's not careful. One more tick. No, he'll live. But he can't he can't go back either. That was a fight won by TCM. Not as convincingly as you might want to have it with the rock dropped. One kill. But yeah, one kill on the support lich, but they 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 keep they themselves in the game. Uh they they could have pursued more, but actually uh you had Strangby coming in from the back, almost insta-killing audio just with the silence and dropping the Mystic Flare. So Audio had to retreat, and without him, they don't have any... They can't slow people down that they're chasing. They only have Bane CCs, which he had both used, and that's it. I mean, upheaval, but that's like... It's not gonna happen most of the time. No. So they need this the Spirit Lance to actually chase anyone, especially when the Spirit Breaker aura is in play. So all they get is a Lich, and I do have to say, Atz's uh, invuln frames on his Nightmare to dodge the Nether Strike was very, very strong. But it's not enough. And Spirit Breaker, of course, adding on the Vladimir's offering. Very, very smart, just for that lifesteal. Lifesteal is- oh, that blink. Yeah, Werner is getting um, charged here. Vacuum trying to help out. There comes the Lich Earth, but it's bouncing around between Blue Bear Ninja. Oh, Wyo comes back to chain that one. Warlock still ends up going down. Lich Earth with getting, uh, getting stopped there, but wow. That wasn't really good. That was still Werner going down before he could throw out his second rock, of course. I mean, he's, he had a still cooldown, that's one of the downsides, such a long yep. cooldown, 165 seconds. In the meantime, the black hole is, of course, up again. We don't have a blink dagger up on Enigma, but with it, with these slows yeah. that Forbes can pop out together with the extra speed that they have themselves. Yeah, they yeah. they can land those black holes completely without the blink. I think the blink on Skyrath is actually a bigger deal, and I'm glad that he built it, because it lets him just blink right up to somebody and immediately Ancient Seal and Concussive shot them. And then, yeah, if you want to black hole that person, you're not going to have any trouble doing so. Like, think about um, 
with Blink plus Atos, think about the effective initiation range that they have. That's like 2,600 units away that they can slow you down from, and then there's a Spirit Breaker. There's a Bull Man all over you after that. Yeah, we just saw the three, well, two supports and a, and a Dark Seer smoke up from a TCM. Ended up getting revealed by that Spirit Breaker and backing off again. I mean, they are the ones that are supposed to be creating safe farm for Gladio, and he is now farming in a place right under the Dire Ward. I mean, the wards that are there for 4FC, they're blocking the Ancients, so that farm stopped. On the top lane, at the Ruin spot, they have got everything covered. And they are, I mean, they don't need more wards in the dire, in the Radiant Jungle, because they are farming there themselves. They are also farming in the Dire Jungle. They're just starving TCM to death right now, and that's something that you can't afford. If you have yourself a phantom, a phantom lancer. Yes. They need they need PL to have a lot more. He only has defusal. Probably Yasha next if I had to guess. And then we'll see if he goes for the heart immediately or if he goes at post manta. But Warlock needs farm too, frankly. They need this Agonims roughly yesterday. Yep. Nope. That's a level 3 Necronomicon up on the Enigma. So that's a lot of extra pushing power there. And I me mean, 4FC, they probably know that, that like very late game they can't take this. So they feel some pressure. So they uh, at least they feel the pressure to keep on the pressure, I would guess. Yeah. So far, so but good. Four heroes now of TCM on the bottom lane. The Necros will help out. What? Yeah, I mean, they so Lich will have his Necro 1 in about 500 gold. Yeah. Uh, Boomski will have his Necro 1 in, well, like a thousand. And you already have Necro 3 on Skyrim? Yeah. No, you don't. But uh, who's the other person that has Necro? Enigma has Necro 3. Yep, always. Yeah. TCM smoked up. They're, they're looking for something. Surge up. Darkseer can't find anybody anymore. Any for everybody out. Yeah, they still have Aegis for a They ping where Bloodwork is, though. Radiant's top mm. tower is mm. under attack. In the meantime, tier 2 top is getting attacked, but nobody is really doing anything about it, apart from the Keeper of Light that will TP there to do something. I'm kind of curious to see what Bloodwork is going to try here, though. Like, he is way outnumbered, but he doesn't know that. Good counter push from Keeper, but not quite enough. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Yep. Strangby is hanging around here as well. So Boomski, now that he has level 2 Vendetta, which is almost fully chainable, can just act as a vision generator. Oh, here's oh. Blueberry Ninja fighting Blumberg. Yeah, Blumberg is gonna charge up. Here comes a Vendetta, two man impale, that's one down. In the meantime, Bane got picked up on the other side. Werner will try to TP out, will not be able to do so. That's three heroes picked up right there, with Trangby, of course, jumping out from the shadows. He was stuck there, or stuck. He was sitting there as well, waiting patiently until Blumberg gave the go sign, which he did. Went on the dark seer, and that's gonna be the one thing that can keep them in the game down for another 35 seconds. Yeah. Of course, that's the chaotic I'm... offering. And the that was uh, slow down. I gotta say, Blomberg was very confident in the power of the bull man there. He didn't. He chose not to nether strike, which means that if he had not proc a bash on that last hit, Verna would have gotten away. But he was just that confident. He believed in the power of the bull man, and he was clearly right to do so. Yeah, that RNG. That RNG. Pray it's not RNG, that. Sheever. It's Bullman. <laughs> and RNG, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. RNG, RNG gods <laughs> just favor bulls a bit more. Like, they're so, holy animals, aren't they? They, I believe so, yeah. Atsy. In, in oh, any Atsy. religion. You're so dead, Atsy. Yeah. <laughs> this is a godlike streak. This Bullman hasn't died. 9-0 and 6. I, yeah. I don't see TCM getting back into this. Blueberry Ninja. There comes the rock. Hits up on 3. Blumberg. Or Boomski trying to run himself oh, out. Meet down the black hole. Get just two, including Wurn and Hawaii. And also, actually, the Golem, which helps out a lot. Hawaii running past the tier fours. Will be safe. Lich Ultimate bouncing around a couple of times. Gladio not dying for it yet, but he doesn't have any mana left. And a Vendetta coming in from Boomski was there to kill off everybody of 4FC. Very, very low HP. One Illuminate would clear three of them out, but, yeah, but they're running. The thing and, is, yeah. they run at, like, look at the Skyrath. 461 freaking move speed with arcane boots. <laughs> like, and the Lich, 455 speed when phasing. It, they can get away so easily, and if they want to chase you, they can do that just as easily. They don't get the racks. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty... Tower. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even try. They were just... <laughs> They were just punching TCM in the face. Literally. Yeah, and the thing is, Audio, he died that fight. So yeah. if he goes heart, he's so far behind for it. If you look at his GPM, it's still at only about 300. So it's a little higher than that, but the heart isn't going to be here for another six minutes. And the heart's not going to help him farm faster. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe he goes Vitality and then tries to move into the Yasha. I don't know. It's so difficult right now to beat TCM because you can just get chased anywhere. Yeah, and they have got some more control back. They've just placed wards from the high grounds. So they get their own base back a bit. I mean, of course, their, their own base just got disintegrated by 4FC. 
who just ran in there, but they got them, themselves some space back. The question is for how long. They need about 70 seconds, a bit less, before they have got that chaotic offering back again. We saw it happen last time. I'm actually, every time again, I don't see the fatal bombs. Is it because Werner's just shut down too fast after he throws at the rock? He's had the fatal bonds a few times, actually. Sometimes he gets it, but a few times he's just been completely shut down, yeah. That's so sad. Because that He's also been trying so to cool. upheaval. One of the main problems with upheaval is that it's channeling. You can't do anything else while you're upheavaling. Yeah, and it's only level 1, so really... 7% slow rate, how much is that actually gonna do? I mean, the people will still run fairly fast. Maybe not as fast as they used to, but... Like, it's percentage-based. So it's not gonna slow them as much as, uh... As if the sh as, as if the uh, bull wasn't there. Yeah, it's it's tough. It is very tough for the situation that TCM is in right now. We have the gold graph going past 20k gold almost in favor of 4FC. Experience graph 25k, and of course that mostly comes back to the supports of TCM still be being level seven and eight, while the supports of 4FC are level 12. Yeah, looks like Krilly gonna go towards his BKB. This is, I mean, it's a, it's a good pickup because a lot of TCM's danger lies in magic damage. It won't actually protect his black hole because they could just respond to a chaotic offering no matter what. But he knows that, so he's just dealing with that as best he can. Strangvi, I, I see probably a uh, Scythe of Ice in his future. That'll be another opportunity to just lock somebody down and keep bashing through them. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> Boomski, none of these are the none real, of them are real. my friend. <laughs> He knows that once he actually used the Vendetta, so... Audio gets out of that fine. You can see him rushing towards... I, I still want to see if this actually ends up being the Yasha or if he's going to rush hard. He, he upgrades his Diffusal. Hmm. This will... I don't know about it's this, actually. It's some extra actually. damage. It is. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of carries swear by it that you always have to get a level 2 Diffusal no matter if you're on it's out very of good. or not. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it gives him some extra damage. Doesn't do that much for his... Uh... For his illusions, though. Yeah, I mean, just... the Vitality Boost doesn't do anything for his illusions anyway, either. It doesn't, yeah. The net worth is just really grim. Like, you have the Spirit Breaker being the lowest of these three at 11.5k, and the Go Audio is stuck down at 8k. So, that's a tough position. Boomski, of course, has a decent amount on Nyx as well, because he has that Necronomicon. TCM, they still have to wait. They have no choice to just try to dictate this game, they just have to wait for things to happen and try to get farm. On both Audio and of course on Verna, who now 850 away from Aghanims, and I'm just, I'm not sure how much Aghanims will change, but they do still need it. And they, there's just so much on 4 of C already, I mean, even if the levels were now even, the items just make such a big difference. Yep. With the with the Assault Grass up on the Spirit Breaker, with the Ages now up on him as well, and I mean, it's not like he's died before, so... Yeah, it's not. But kind of even if he does... Kind of put the Ages up on him, to be fair. Well, he is their sustained damage dealer. Well, the only other option was Skywrath, so they could have put it on Skywrath. Yeah, I think they... Well, actually, Skywrath he's also, died he hasn't died either. So. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Skywrath is going for a Hex. We do see the Tier to Tower Top probably going down. With a Vio hang around just to throw out some Illuminates if need be. But they're TPing back right now because they need to. Fortification will still go down to delay the tower going down, but down it will go. Yeah, audio gets this tower, no question, but I, I mean, yeah, they have to wait. They have to try to stop this tier 3 push. The tier 3 goes down, but they maybe can try to defend the racks. Yeah, they still, there's still fortification for TCM as well. We do have a blink dagger from the Dark Seer, though, but maybe he can do something again. Nice nightmare from Matsy, but he walks right through the Mystic Flare. Ends up going down with a Nether Strike. In the meantime, Dark Seer Wall. There comes the Chaotic Offering. Krilly taking a lot of damage there. Mechanism is popped. He's looking for a target to Black Hole. He can't find anybody because everybody is dead. He Black Holes the Golems. Uh, Verna actually sold his really items. Work. Everything except the boots to afford the Agonims. I actually think this was a very smart decision. Like, it was the correct decision to make under the circumstance because you need that Aghanims, but they don't have enough. They can't live through it. And Bane didn't get an opportunity to Fiend's Grip. That was another big thing. 4FC used two ultimates just to bring the Bane down, but it was absolutely the right call because without Fiend's Grip to lock either Bullman or Skyrath down, they just rampage. Yeah, that was, I mean, everybody, again, everybody of 4FC got very low. The Fatal Bonds were actually very nice this time. We're very on par. Did a lot of damage, but... Now the levels do matter. That was that was just pure extra survivability going the way of TCM, and uh, going way 4 of C rather. That means that 4 of C they keep their hopes alive. Yep. They still have this small chance to go to Kiev, and it all depends on what other teams do later today. 4 of C still has a game up against KP, which is going to be 
uh, one of the deciding matches for them anyway. They have to win it to still have a chance, and then they have to hope that some other people will lose their matches. It's right. all very confusing. We are but first going to see a Fnatic vs. Empire. Sorry, what? Yeah. No, I was, I was just going to say, even if 4FC don't make the playoffs, this is easily their their most convincing Star Ladder performance and probably their most convincing tournament performance thus yet. Like, they did very no, well this 4FC season. No, 4FC came like third at the Thor Open or something. Oh, they did. You're right. Thor Open, they, they did well too. But still, this is they've beaten some really strong teams in Star Ladder this season. Yeah. And did. of course, this game, great. I know Bruno, uh, Statman Bruno, is going to be super happy about this Spirit Breaker because he, uh, he really wants Boltman to make an impact. Yeah, Spirit Breaker solo mid, it works. Here's the proof. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, Fnatic versus Empire will be our next matchup. There's going to be two games at the same time. So there's DD versus OSG and Fnatic versus Empire. We are following Fnatic versus Empire. It's a game that got postponed from last Tuesday. It first started out as a death win for Empire because Fnatic wasn't able to get there in time. They had some router issues. But Empire being the good guy Empire and they didn't really want to take the death win. So they want to still play. For Empire, it's actually a pretty important match. They don't want to be in the bottom four. There's still a chance that they will be. Fnatic, they can't really go to Kiev anymore and they... Probably look to be okay to also not get dropped out of uh, Star Series, but they also kind of want to win. They're they're on even grounds right now. Both have five wins, so we'll see how they do. Stick around for more Dota 2 action. This is of course Star Ladder Season Six. We have got day number 26 out of 27. Tomorrow we have four games. Today there is going to be seven, and those are the last games for the Star Ladder group stages before we head ourselves to the Land Finals on the 4th of July. But first, Empire vs. Fnatic. Stay tuned. <laughs> 